Hello everyone, a warm welcome to this session by Pallavi Sharma on the topic, begin your Selenium journey by committing to the Selenium documentation. So this session is going to be about Pallavi's experiential journey as to how she made her first contribution. The stage is all yours, Pallavi, all the best. Thank you so much, Mahiti. Thank you so very much. Uh, hey everyone, I hope you all are able to see me and hear me. And thank you so much for joining the Selenium India conference. A very warm welcome to all of you. Thank you so much for uh, joining the session. I hope you all can see uh, my screen um, and my presentation. Uh, while during presentation, I don't think I'll be able to see your uh, messages, but I guess uh, you can still post them. So thank you so much for joining. So uh, let's begin. Um, again, a very warm welcome all, to all of you at the Selenium India conference. That's an online conference. Uh, and uh, the title of my talk is Begin Your Journey to Be a Selenium Committer Through Contributing to Selenium Docs. Um, it's primarily a talk with demonstration and we talks about Selenium internals. Hey everyone, I hope uh, everyone has got my name. My name is Pallavi Sharma. I am a founder with Five Elements Learning and Mosaic Words. I'm a committer with Selenium Project currently right now with the documentation and I hope uh, sometime soon I'll be able to uh, also contribute to the core project, but until that day comes. I have a professional experience of around 18 years. I'm also a published author of four technical books. I am um, an instructor and a coach also. I have taught around more than thousand of people across globe on Selenium. And uh, I'm also an instructor at Udemy. Uh, you can scan this QR code if you want to. Uh, it has the links through which you can connect with me. And I would love to be connected with you guys. Um, and girls, uh, everyone here, uh, so we can do that. Uh, I guess uh, that's about me. And uh, it appears to be quite hot outside. So I guess a uh, benefit of online conference is definitely that we can, you know, uh, sit in our uh, places and listen to the speakers and communicate with the listeners. So I think that's great. So the agenda for the talk of around 45 minutes, that's the session which is going to be about. And uh, we are going to spend a few minutes on Selenium project. Um, my, um, my approach would be so that you become familiar uh, when you would want to contribute to the project. So through those lenses, we will look at Selenium project. Uh, we will spend some time on how Selenium documentation as in the website looks on the uh, on the web and, and as a GitHub project. We will have uh, some discussion on how do we set our system so that we can start with the contribution. We are then going to um, uh, have a demonstration of how we identify where and how we can contribute to the Selenium project. Uh, so there are ways we are going to look at one of them and we are going to then do a contribution right now. And finally, we will be, if hopefully everything works like any demo works, we are going to do a commit and we will have time for questions and discussions in the end. So uh, I would please be requesting you guys, if you have any questions, uh, then please, um, keep that question with you, you can note it down. You can also post it in Q&A, but I will be answering them or taking them up at the end of the session, okay? So there will be time for that. And uh, as we begin, a small joke for you guys, an icebreaker, it's definitely very hot outside. So I hope you all are staying hydrated and uh, have are sitting in a cool environment. Okay. So uh, what is Selenium? A lot of people have a lot of uh, conceptions and perceptions about what Selenium is. Uh, this is from the Selenium website itself. It says that 
Selenium um, is basically a base library which automates the web browser. And that's all what Selenium is. How we use that power, it's entirely up to us. So we use Selenium for browser automation for testing purposes. We can use Selenium for browser automation for web scraping purposes. We can use Selenium to build AI agents that all powers are entirely up to us. How do we want to use Selenium? Uh, we are all aware. Uh, I hope we all here are already Selenium users. Uh, in case you are still new to the project, uh, there are three main components of this project. We have the Selenium IDE, which uh, basically is an extension of the last I know of Chrome and Firefox, both browsers, for record and playback of scripts. Then we have Selenium WebDriver, which are basically a set of various language bindings. So you have in Java, Ruby, Python, JavaScript, Kotlin. And it provides us with the ability to create robust browser-based automation. We then have Selenium Grid, which helps us in scaling by distributing it on different machines. So these are the three uh, main sub-projects under the Selenium umbrella. Now, uh, whenever we are uh, wanting to contribute to any open source project or also to use any open source project, it's always a good idea to get, uh, to, get to know the people behind the project or the governance of that project so that you are able to uh, understand who are the people, what is the community like, what is the support like for your project, how can you help? So uh, this link basically takes us to the Selenium project governance. It's from the Selenium website itself. It tells us about the different types of roles and responsibility and people who are on currently on those roles and responsibility. So in the project, we have people in the PLC level, which is the project leadership committee. We have people in the technical leadership committee. We have committers. The committers are from the core Selenium project, committers who would want to commit and contribute to the website and documentation. Our area of interest for this talk is becoming a contributor through website and documentation. And after you have done a significant number of contribution, I think the number is uh, more than 15 or so, uh, maybe 20. So after you have done that significant number of contribution, you become a committer. Then we have translators. So if we look at the Selenium uh, website in the documentation, the documentation is available in four different languages. So we have uh, committers who basically work as translators and make available those documentation in those languages, spoken languages of English, Portuguese, Chinese, and Japanese. And then we have committers at the Selenium Docker project. The most crucial part of Selenium project are the users, people who are actually using Selenium. With the last 4.21 release, we know that there have been 2.4 million active downloads of Selenium. So we have a significant number of users of Selenium over the last 20 years. We then have the sponsors, the organizations, and the people who sponsor Selenium, who can financially contribute to the project. And uh, we definitely have volunteers, people who come and join Selenium through various ways for events, um, by you know spreading a word about Selenium, by coaching someone. So these all also fall under the Selenium project. And we recognize them. So uh, since you all are here, the question one would want to ask uh, themselves is why, why should we contribute to open source? What's the benefit? Um, my question back to you would be, why not? So whenever we want to find a way of doing things and we want to find reasons to do something, maybe asking the question, why not do that would be a good way to start. Well, contributing to open source, you can help learn new skills. It basically helps also with building your reputation professional and help in networking. You meet a lot of good people, um, well-meaning people who can further help you. 
you get aware uh, become aware of the new technologies and concepts and you have the inside information about the project which is very helpful and could be helpful for your career journeys and well uh, do it because you care about that project or uh, well when why do anything at all the question is again back to us that why not we should contribute to open source uh, it it's it's an important part and uh, an integral part and we should all try and take out some time and do it now uh, there is this prerequisite of uh, joining this uh, talk and helping i mean hoping this talk be is helpful for you uh, i'll be moving on now uh, to the aspects of getting things done so we should have a working knowledge of a programming language using which we would like to contribute to selenium we should have a working knowledge of what selenium is uh, how we work with selenium we should have a working knowledge of a unit test framework which is related to the programming language of your choice we should have a working knowledge of git and well we should be motivated to help improve the selenium project okay so uh, now here we are on the selenium documentation the focus of this talk is to uh, help you and help the project gets gain some more contributors by contributing to the selenium documentation so i'm going to showcase you two links here one is the documentation we see on the web and the another is the github link as we see on the github the project as we see and we will understand some of the folder structures and uh, how we see it on the web so that when we would like to start the actual contribution it would help us okay um uh... fair enough so this is the link for selenium documentation at selenium.dev/documentation which we see and uh, it has got some sections like overview you have a section called as web driver and this is where you have various subsections like getting started drivers browsers wait element interactions and so on you have a section called as selenium manager and then so on and so forth grid and everything let's keep the focus on the web driver section to understand how the github project looks like and try to map some of the elements or uh, pages we see here to the project okay so this is the selenium documentation i am in the web driver section where i am able to see the sections like getting started drivers browsers elements etc and this is the selenium github project as we see okay i would just quickly go to my branch okay here is the project which we see now this is the so when we are going to start we basically have to create a fork of this project and have our own uh, uh have one in our own github repository this is the folder website and docs and another important folder for us is examples i'll explain them let's first see the website and docs if i click here on the website and docs i again see a set of folders our area of interest lies in content clicking on content we can see the about the blog and other information this become parts of the main selenium website okay so you can contribute to the main selenium website and you can contribute to the documentation our interest is documentation 
So we see these folders, right? About grid, iDriver, legacy, overview, test practices, and web driver. And we see them here as well. The main folders, overview, web driver, and so on. Right? So these folder structures basically refer to what we are seeing here. The main parts. Now, uh, uh, my interest is web driver. I'll open web driver. Again, if I see the folder structures here, action API, bidirectional browser, driver elements, I see them here as well. Okay. Now I'm choosing a particular example, which we will be working in this talk. I'm choosing an example inside the interaction folder. And I am clicking in here on Windows. Okay. So I am inside the interaction folder Windows. This is how the documentation for working with Windows and Tab look like for Selenium website. The places where we can make contribution in the documentation are tagged with move code. That's one of the ways you can identify how and where you can contribute to the documentation aspects of Selenium. Besides checking the open PR for any project, this is another way. Okay. So you have this move code. Now, for any concept discussed in the documentation, an example code is provided in the different language bindings that Selenium supports. So for Java, this is the example which is available. And the examples which we see here are basically available again on the GitHub project. So this is the file. How do we see this file? I will now show you that. So we have seen the website and doc folder, which was inside the GitHub project. This is the example folder. I am again going to go back to these folders. I'll go back to these folder more than once in this talk. In this example folder, the example which we saw on the website is of Java. So let's go to the Java folder here. Inside it, the test, Java Dev Selenium. Inside it, our section was interactions. In the interaction, the file which we saw here, this, these lines are basically taken from this file. I had created this uh, file some days ago, around five days ago I did it. So this is the file. The line of codes which you see here are the line of codes which we see on the web page. I hope that is clear. So if you scroll down in this particular section, okay, for the Java tab, the example code is given. If I switch to other language, for example, we will be doing in this talk for C sharp. If I switch to C sharp, you again see this code here, right? The difference is this is written as a text, not as a code file. So one of the things which we are doing at the Selenium documentation is we are trying to take these examples and create actual code files for them. Earlier in the documentation, we had contributions where the code was written as text and uh, that led to some of the uh, uh, concerns like we would want our examples to be also working. So when the project gets built, all examples get tested. So these executable files helps us execute these examples and we know we have working examples here for people to explore. So we will be doing it for C sharp. Now let's go back to the project. Where do we have to make changes? So we will go to now the .NET. We will go to the Selenium docs. The folder for us was interactions. 
in here there is this window test.cs file currently it's an empty file we all see that so we will try and add some code here for this okay and what exactly is this which for which we are going to make a code on and do a commit so we all know that we can work with different windows and tabs when we are working with selenium there are different commands which are available to us to fetch a window handle so this section explains how you can fetch a window handle the current window handle we can do that this is an example code for it if you want to switch to any of the open windows we can first fetch all the window handles which are open and then we can switch to the window which we would want to we can close a particular window or a tab if our focus is on that and we can go ahead and use a feature which is available with selenium 4 and its latest version how we can open a new window or a new tab so for all these sections the code right now is available for java example code we will do it for c sharp i hope that the folder structure is clear which we see in the github project so we will be making changes at two places we will be adding our code to this window test.cs file and which is in the examples in here in the website and doc section for this web page we will add the code lines the file of interest for us are the four files in the four different languages which selenium supports this is the file which shows the english translations japanese portuguese and chinese i would like to mention in here that i am only aware of english as a language okay uh, but when we are writing and submitting code it's done for all languages i hope it's clear till here i'm moving on so th these are the slides i have just tried and explained okay so again to be on the same page the selenium java selenium sorry language bindings are available for java c sharp python ruby javascript and kotlin these are the various programming languages we see them on the selenium documentation um and you, for any concept which has which is being discussed uh, in the documentation we have example codes available for these languages with selenium supports the same selenium website can be translated or can be read in english portuguese japanese or chinese i hope this is clear and we are now going on to making our contribution and with that i have a very small message to share since we are all here nice people wanting to contribute to an open source project uh it's i just thought i would take a time a second of yours to also just tell that we should all plant a tree as well get some relief for us and people around us and our environment so yeah i hope the message is received and i'm sure all of us are doing our bit okay having said that we are now on to the contribution steps we have around 20 more minutes before we take the question and answers so let's make the most of it so for the contribution steps these are the four important setups which we will have to ensure and do we have the system setup where we have should have the programming language setup in place uh we should have the selenium client language bindings for that we should have a default browser to run our scripts and something called as a hugo server to view site locally we'll spend a minute on hugo server in the github you should have a github account fork the selenium repository clone it on your system and create a branch we would like to identify the file which we need to work 
to save the time i have done that here i have showed you where we will be making the contribution we need to update the content file i have showed you the four files which we will be updating update the example code we'll be doing it for all language translations once we do all that we need to check to, with the help of hugo server if we are able to build the website locally if you are able to do that it's an important check only then we are supposed to go ahead raise the pr give a proper description sign the contribution license agreement and then communicate that to the team and wait for changes this is the example i just showed you that we did it for java we will here be doing it for c sharp the steps which i will be doing right now i have also listed as a flow chart i'm sure the slides and everything will be made available after the talk and so is the recording so we will now uh, move on quickly i will go through these slides this is just a system setup for c sharp parallel to the language of your choice you can ensure you have this in place an id to work proper language bindings of selenium available a unit test framework available and a default browser to run your scripts these are some helpful links which basically list down in nice english what the steps we are discussing here okay taking a minute to explain hugo hugo is basically a popular open source framework for building static website and doxy which is the theme also used for project is a theme hugo theme which is basically used uh, for selenium there are the steps for installing hugo server on your system you would need that before you make a contribution to selenium because we need to check whether we are able to build the selenium website locally or not so we install git go and hugo this is for windows similarly if you can go to the, these links you will find it for the operating system of your choice so let's now start with the steps okay so i am opening my github account i am going to my fork repository and i am going to sync fork my branch is up to date to save some time i have already cloned the project on my system this is the project local folder available as if on my system i have a nice uh word document available with me which keeps me on track as to the steps i'm going to do because i am able to commit not very often to selenium i tend to forget so i have this nice uh, word doc available with me to help me remember and make less mistakes i do make mistakes okay so uh before we jump on to adding these steps i would like to show you the example code and we need to ensure that the example which we are trying to contribute to the project is working as well okay so that's the visual studio ide okay so my test which i would like to add is written here okay so it's window code test i need to ensure that the file or the class name is same as the one i see on the github project okay so i will be making those changes in here the folder of our interest was examples the project folder was dotnet docs interactions name of the files is window test.cs 
So I'll ensure that that's the name of my file here as well. Okay, cool. Now, the code which we have written, we need to ensure that it passes. So we are basically launching an instance of the Chrome driver. We are navigating to this particular URL. It's an important point here. I will just take a second, sorry. Second is too less. I'll take a minute to show you this URL. So on the Selenium website itself, there are a lot of uh, sample web pages which have been made available to help with the documentation. So we can have a look at those web pages and pick the one which best fits the type of contribution we are going to make and use that as an example. This helps ensure the sanity uh, is maintained for documentation because if you are using some other websites and those websites stop working, which are not controlled by Selenium, then we don't look good. So here, if you see this page, it has got nice link which says open a new window. You can close it. And that's very much what you want to do here in an example. So this example file need to run on your system or wherever you are trying it out. So that when you are committing this example code, it works. Okay, so all, so it works. Now the important point in here is, well, there are a lot of important points. Every point is important, I guess, uh, to note these line numbers, okay? And this is where we will be needing them when we add them in that particular section of the code. Let's do that. Okay. Cool. So let's start making those changes. I'm going to open this file I see here with Visual Studio Code. I use another IDE for the purpose of line numbers. I'm going to remove this base test. And I am uh, later going to add this test file. Okay. So these line numbers, these are important, 14 to 18. These are various sections which we see on the page for which we have these code snippets which we would want to add. So let's see how do we do that. Right now I have added the code to the local system, okay? And it's a good time to now showcase this. So in my command prompt, I am right now in my local directory. I go to website and docs and I run the Hugo server. When I do that, I should be able to see on this particular URL, localhost 1313, the Selenium website. I should be able to build it locally. Okay, while that happens. Now I'm opening other set of files in which I will be making changes, which is the content file, okay? In the website doc, in the content section, the folder of interest was in documentation, web driver, interactions. 
there are four files because I am making a code example commit. I have to do it for all these four files. So the file names are windows. .en is English, .j is Japanese, Portuguese, and Chinese. I'm going to open these files in edit mode with Notepad++. That's the editor I use. I'm going to open all these files. Okay. Now I'm going to add the content. So I hope you can see that this is the local, this is the local website. Okay. It's the local website, local instance of the Selenium documentation, which we right now are seeing. And we are going to make changes here. Okay. So the changes, sorry, we are going to make should be reflected here okay so we have to ensure that we may change our local in, uh, website structure should not get disturbed and here we can change the various language translations okay going back to english now let's add the code We need to add from navigate URL to verifying that the window handle is opened and we are asserting that window handle. Looking at the lines here, it's from this line to this line, right? 14 to 18. So let's make that change. I'm going to copy the tab structure used for Java. And I'm going to go to the section of C sharp and make changes. Okay. I'm interested in this line. I'll make a change here and I need to give the path correct. We are going to give the path of the .NET folder structure. So .NET, Selenium, Interactions, the name of the file is windowtest.cs. And the line number we were interested in for 14 to 18. And I'm going to do this for all languages for the c-sharp section for the sake of time i am doing it for get window handle and i will show you in here the get window handle so how do i recognize i know it's in the first few lines and this is the file on which i make changes this is the line i add this code okay Going to the next one, the Portuguese one. I'm going to add it and the one in Chinese to add that as well. So I've made the changes, I have added my code example. Okay, sometimes you see the code examples here, sometimes you don't. Like right now for C sharp, I don't. Okay. So what I would be doing is now making the changes and committing. That's all right. You need to ensure that you are able to see it on your system as in you have made the correct changes. For Java, this change becomes visible. For C-sharp and some other languages, it doesn't. 
Now I'll just ensure that the tabs and everything I have added is fine. If something I have done is not okay, the Hugo server doesn't like it. So it would start failing. But if I don't see a failure, then I can assume that things are good. You need to ensure that if you have opened any tabs, you have closed it, any extra spaces, everything you can remove, that would be great too. So we have done for C Sharp for all the four files. Okay, I'm going to close them. That's it. This we will take later. So we added an example code. And we can just quickly check. We have not broken anything. The Hugo server is running and all that stuff. There are no errors here. That's great. And now it's time to do the commit. So I'm going to check the status. You can see that the status shows that some files have been modified. I'm going to Okay, and it says that file files are changed. So now you are going to, uh, I think I did forget to check out a branch. I need to do that. Otherwise I'm making changes in the trunk. So I will, yeah, I miss steps. So I guess I will quickly, uh, show that so basically here uh, you need to have a you know branch so first you never check out a branch so you have the c sharp let's say window branch and then you make those changes so once that is done uh, sorry about that. I missed that step. But once you do that, you again, then you do this, you know, um, you add the files, you commit and you then push. And once you do that push, you will be able to basically uh, see that you have made a change. Okay. So in your GitHub project, you will have this uh, pop-up. It says that you have made a change. You can compare and pull request. And then you basically open the PR. You give it a meaningful title. You add in description and motivation context, and you create the pull request. Once you do that, you need to sign the contribution license agreement. The message once you made that commit, goes to someone from the PLC or TLC Selenium maintainers as well. And they basically then look at the code. If there is any change which is required, they come back to you and tell you. Uh, and that's how one, after maybe one or two communications, your contribution gets accepted. The first let set of reviews are basically done by an AI agent. It does share some nice interesting reviews it's up to you to accept the changes that it is sharing or not for example i'll just show you for 1754 uh, these were some of the uh, peer reviewer peer like reviews which the ai agent shared so that's your And these are some of the links which basically need code and you can contribute to any of the languages you are aware of and make changes here. These are some of the helpful links and I will take up the session for any questions if you guys have. Thank you, Pallavi, for your session. Uh, it was it was very nice to hear about your experience and I hope many people will also start contributing. 
Thank so you. we have uh, a few questions. Sure. Uh, I understand that Chinese and Japanese languages, since they have specific characters, but why split PT hyphen BR as well? That's uh, Portuguese. So the Selenium lang I mean Selenium documentations are available in various languages. So those were the four files in which we were adding code for all the language translations. And if I'm contributing, should I need to translate to Chinese and Japanese using Google Translate or how does it work? No, uh, right now I have showed you um, a code sample to be contributed, okay? Uh, I'm not aware of language translations because I'm myself not familiar with these languages. I primarily contribute at the code level, okay? And if I am doing it for a text, like let's say I've made changes in a text, okay? I made some changes here. I do it only for English. So we there are there is a other set of con, con, committers in Selenium project who are looking at these translations. You can also become a part of that if you want. And uh, Deepak asks, can can we change any code in the Selenium docs? Yes, yes, that's what we just did. We okay. added code. We can change these code. I have not copy pasted this code and put it in a file. I have created my own. And there are a lot of places where you will find that the code itself is not there. So you need to add those code samples. Just wanted to again say that we are here celebrating 20 years of Selenium. So many, many thanks to users of Selenium, the community of Selenium. And thank you so much for uh, joining me today. Thank you so much.